All right, guys, as requested, I'm going to review a video called The Sad Reality of Man by Tunde. Men are facing some of the loneliest times in history, as well as porn sites being visited more than apps like Netflix, Amazon, and Twitter combined, as well as men being 70% of the overall people watching from paying girls online through a screen. There are 4 billion women on earth. Yet, many men are without partners. I think because of the internet, we'll be able to meet any of those 4 billion women at our comfort, but this is not the case, as our generation is the most sexless of all. But what's going on? Why are men lonely? I'll give you my first reason, fear of rejection. We men are terrified of rejection. It's like a story of my rejection I'll tell in a bit after Ruben, who is a YouTuber with the name Social Animal. Through his channel, he shows you the reality of many men and how much men as a whole, how much we fear rejection. Ruben flies over to his subscribers, who majority are men. He then puts them on several challenges where they are to speak with separate random girls. Excuse me. I can tell you right away what the problem there is. They are not good looking and uh, one of the guys was incredibly ugly. <laughs> Of course he will have a problem. How is that a surprise? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you want to pay for dinner? <laughs> no, um, I do not. When Ruben first mentions this challenge to them, you could see just through their facial expressions that we men as a whole are terrified of facing rejection from girls. Some of the men would at times struggle to initiate conversations with the girls. It's shocking to see how ruthless some of the girls can even be with the rejecting. So, um, would you like to exchange? Okay, here's the biggest problem with this whole thing and uh, that's the problem also with all of these pickup artists and whatnot. You should not be going after girls. Firstly, it's pathetic, but uh, they are also not going to be attracted to you for that reason alone, simply because it's unnatural. I've never approached a girl in my whole life. And okay, I have a YouTube channel, it's a lot easier for me, I'm talking from a point of privilege, so to speak, but girls have always emailed me and gone after me. I can't even imagine going after a girl, not saying that I would never do it in my life, but it's just something that doesn't make sense to me naturally. Girls should be very attracted to you and uh, you should be able to pull them in like a magnet. What they're doing there is pathetic simply because from what I've seen so far, they are quite unattractive and girls will really just be offended if somebody like that is going to try to approach them. If they like somebody, they're gonna go after them anyway. Okay. The majority of the time, some girls would tell them no in their face and shrug them off in places full of people. I understand that some of the girls they're approaching, you know, may have partners already, but the ways they were saying no, it could be slightly better. Often when we approach girls like we just seen, the possibility of rejection is very, very high. So we men just choose to... The possibility of rejection is high if you're not good looking. That's it. And as I said, if you're good looking, you don't need to go after girls anyway. Therefore, what you're doing is most likely going to fail, of course. And also this fear of rejection is a biochemical state. Even if I would be in the state where I would have to go and approach girls to find a girlfriend, then I would still never care if somebody would reject me. I really don't care what people think about me. It would mean nothing to me. But I understand if you have the biochemical state of a grain-eating slave, instead of somebody who eats raw meat, that you would actually feel hurt if a girl would say no to you. <laughs> but I would only laugh at that. Avoid it entirely and not even talk to the girls. And rejection is a sad thing. Just like my story in 2011 when I moved from Nigeria to the US. The US being a pretty new country to me and the people being very different from where I came from. I was terrified of talking and opening up to new people just due to the possibility of experiencing rejection. I would be thinking, what if I talk to someone and they give me a dirty look? Because of that, you know, I'd have no friends for the first few months of being in the country, you know. Topic of rejection is why there are several YouTube channels out there just dedicated to talking to women. A lot of the men watching those channels would rather... Yes, and pretty much all of those channels are a scam and they have these so-called consultations with guys and try to teach them how to approach women. When in reality, if you are good looking, you could make the stupidest jokes, have the cheesiest pickup lines or say nothing at all and she would still run after you. That's the reality. To live vicariously through the creator's lives and not approach the women themselves. I am incapable of feeling, of feeling or giving love. And this is a result of being addicted to pornography. Instead of going out. 
That's pretty bad. Oh, facing the fear of rejection themselves and conquering it, they'll rather have these YouTubers face it for them. Something just as simple as opening your phone, going on a Google search, then typing in certain sites has led many men into a life of destruction, desperation, and addiction. For about the last three years, I have been battling an addiction that has been compromising my future. I think that uh, we can for sure see one addiction. You're a drug addict. <laughs> and my relationships. Compared to the 90s where if you wanted to get your hands on some porn, you would search multiple shows and magazines. Today, instant pleasure is right at our fingertips. For instance, TikTok. If you look on TikTok, for example, there's a niche of horny videos telling people which Twitter accounts to go to for the best porn. And the same TikTok app where you can find loads of clearly grown women who left twerking for an audience full of kids. Then we have Twitter one of the nightly social media apps for porn as well as all the known websites yeah of course this kind of stuff shouldn't be allowed but let's be real it's never gonna happen all of these companies are uh, working together and the people behind porn they got us good and the fact that it's a weapon of mass destruction that's so effortlessly available it's no surprise that many men will become a prisoner to it every hidden things a man will see from a real woman he's already seen on his phone screen so why go out on a few dates or even have a conversation with a woman where he could just type in a few words in Google and get the same satisfaction through the screen. OnlyFans and the lonely man of OnlyFans. We all know what OnlyFans is. It's a plastic intimacy, it's not real. And the number one reason you should, of course, look for a real woman is because uh, I would hope that you want to have children and uh, it's impossible online. <laughs> we all know having exclusive content and privileges to your favorite models or celebrities is what most men desire. And OnlyFans just happens to be the platform that started offering that. Since its creation back in 2016, OnlyFans has taken a very, very dark turn. Dark turn that led to a change in our society today. Bad Baby, also known as Daniel Bergoli, is an internet meme personality now turned rapper who gained her fame by appearing on the Dr. Phil show back in 2016. Bad Baby would take to Instagram back in February of 2021 to announce her plan of joining OnlyFans when she turned 18. Six days after her birthday, she would launch an OnlyFans account just to make a whopping $1 million in her first six hours. For more context, this was a girl that was just 17 years old, barely legal, a day before creating her account. Other celebrities like Black China, ex-wife to the forgotten Kardashian, who launched an OnlyFans. Wow, I'm really so glad I've never heard of any of these people. <laughs> As in 2020, where for just $20 a month, she would give you access to multiple NSFW videos as well as photos. She has made 240 million since she has been on OnlyFans. Now, who are these lonely fans making these women stupid rich? I'll give you the answer, men. This is the lack of intimacy in our society today. I could never in a million years imagine paying some girl, even one dollar online, to see some kind of photos with less clothes on or whatever they post there. Even if I was uh, incredibly unattractive and nobody would want to be with me, I would never go online and pay these people money. It just doesn't make any sense to me in any way at all. Today, how do we go from strong and assertive men to weak men that are now paying for intimacy over the screen? Women have more options. Another reason for our loneliness is hypergamy. Around June 2018, one of my YouTube friends, Soloin, would conduct a dating app experiment where- There's no such thing as hypergamy, obviously. It was invented a few years ago, completely made up. No woman on earth cares about your sociological or educational background status <laughs> at all. He would make a fake Tinder profile. He pretended to be this girl, Ayana Lewis. Soloin would grab pictures of Ayana from Instagram and fill his entire Tinder profile with multiple photos of her. He even gives the fake profile a pseudonym of Jennifer. After he finished setting the profile up, Soloin would swipe right one time and instantly he'd get a match. Just a few moments after his first match, he'd get another one. This will continue on for a moment where Soloin would come to a huge total of 10 Tinder matches in just five minutes. On day two of the experiment, Soloin would wake up to a notification of 15 new additional matches and a barrage of new messages from each of the men. That experiment video that was recorded in 2018 would stand the test of time and prove our reality today. Today, where an average man can manage to get one match in just 10 minutes, women on the opposite are managing to pull 10 matches in just a small time frame of 10 minutes. Dating apps. First, with dating apps, the number one place where couples today meet, there's already an affair ground that put many men at a disadvantage. First, there are more men than women in all the well-known dating apps. On Tinder alone, over 70% of their whole user base is men, leaving just 30% as the women. Before dating apps were a thing, women would usually meet men within their area or you- It's only 30% because you can only find, um, hmm, I can't say the word on YouTube, those kind of women on there. Why would you ever want to have any kind of contact with them in any way at all? You know, through close friends and stuff. Or, you know, now with hookup sites and social media, 
the options for women are really limitless. As we just saw with the Tinder study, no matter what type of woman you are, either pretty or, you know, the other, there's that one man that would go to bed. It is very limited because you can't find any good women on any of these apps. It's impossible. And with you, it's the reality of things. And because women have a load of options, they're left to pick the best looking ones out of all the options, leaving out the men that are considered average, extreme standards of women. Today, in the times where people aren't going outside as much, libraries are shutting down, and people are getting married through dating apps, the loneliness of men is even bound to increase. Add all those things with women wanting that perfect man that checks all their boxes. Traditionally, you all meant to watch the brand. We will call it. You understand? Wow. What the hell is that thing on the left? <laughs> you're women to be here, you're meant to be there. That's why it's different. That's why it's different. If God has blessed you with your queen, you, should, you better just grab her. Guys, I mean, look at this magnificence. You know, perfection. I'm a queen, darling. Do you understand? I'm a woman superior gender do you understand for some women if you don't meet a certain salary height or emotional requirement you're automatically disqualified from their pool but there's something bubbling under the earth something our dating apps glorify which is our hookup culture our link up one and done culture is one of the reasons why we men experience loneliness i'm gonna spill the beans here right a lot of his men picture having a lot of women as trophy and i think it comes from the many things that we digest for example, rap music and even the current red pill leaders that are blowing up as well as their ideologies, you know. I think one thing many men fail to realize is when these guys are giving their advice, you know, those red pill leaders, their advice is only based on what they've experienced in their dating life. All those wild theories and speculations does not go for all women. And I repeat, it does not go for all women. And I believe I can speak on both sides because I've been on both ends of the spectrum. I used to binge a lot of red pill back, I would say a year ago. Because just a year ago, I was a red pill fanatic. I would be. If only all red pillers would realize that red pill is the real blue pill and that only looks matter, and you should really just check out the topic of black pill and realize that there's no pickup lines or anything that you can learn to really improve yourself when it comes to the way women see you. And really, the only thing you can do is hardcore plastic surgery, such as jaw surgery. It's not recommending that, but if you want to somehow improve in the dating scene then really it's the only way men would waste so much less time go through so much less pain if only they would realize that the red pill is the blue pill basically digest a lot of manosphere advice kevin samuels alpha male strategy fit x stuff is cold and even fresh and fit their advice did not make my dating life better in any way shape or form in fact it actually made it worse while I was listening to those red pill ideologies, you know, it made me kind of look at women in a different light and almost made me start to resent women in a way. Things that some of those men say, you think they were not born by a woman. And it might sound crazy to us. some of y'all red pill may have helped you in ways where you could not imagine, where I could not imagine. But unfortunately for me, it was the total opposite, bro. Red pill kind of messed up my dating life, you know. And after I did that, my dating life literally just shot up. It just went up. You feel me? And while listening to their advice, I remain lonely and struggle to pull any girls. It's the reality. And that was the irony of it. Once I stopped listening to those men advice on the internet, I pulled more girls. Surprise. It's already this mentality to pull girls. You should uh, find one girl for your whole life and create a family with her. That's the only thing that you should be doing as a guy and a girl, of course, also. Surprisingly. And outlets like that, where I listened, I digested all those things, was why I didn't want to settle down. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to indulge in our hookup culture. I, I used to think all women were cheaters. Yo, if you got with a woman, she would eventually cheat on you. It's never like that, right? It, come on. You know, because I fell into the trap of the red pill, you know, I would start to think that every girl I met in my life was temporary. And I had many trust issues when the girls clearly didn't give me any reason to. So I acted temporary towards them. If you ask me someone that's been on both ends of the spectrum, the only red pill ideology I would stick to is bettering myself every day as a man. Everything I've said in this video and everything the red pill leaders say, I challenge you guys to go test it out. Go, you know, go out with some friends one night, talk to women and heck, become their friend. That friend zone shit, I don't believe in it because eventually I feel like if you you really a good friend, bro, she started like you, bro. That is, that's how I see it. Like, that's how I see it. The friend zone is never the end zone. Yo. And if I'm looking to the right, you know, my notes is right here. But everything I've said in the video, challenge it, test it out. Thank y'all for listening.
It's interesting what he said at the end, that the friend zone is never the end zone. And I wish that it was true, but unfortunately it isn't. It would be great for him and uh, for a lot of men if you could simply spend some time with her. She would uh, see you as a great friend. Maybe she trusts you. And then eventually she what? What is she going to do? She's going to be intimate with you maybe out of pity. And it's not going to last. But if that's your only option and uh, that's how you want to live life, you want to be with girls for a few weeks or for a few months, maybe even a year, until she finds somebody that she actually finds attractive, then whatever, it's your life, go for it. Do whatever you want in your life. We can for sure all agree that everybody's looking for love. Everybody wants to be loved, women and men. But uh, humans need to understand that love is biochemical. Women fall in love with your looks and once they do, and maybe you have experienced this when she looks into your eyes and she's completely into you, addicted, so to speak, but that's normal. That is what love is and she looks up to you, you are the only guy for her. That is really what you should be looking for. And uh, you're not going to get that if she friends on you and she's you as a great friend and uh, maybe will be intimate with you. Love is all about your genetics at the end of the day. And I can understand that this is really hard for people to accept. And uh, I understand why people cope with red pill, which is really the blue pill, as I said, and try to believe that maybe it is about your status, money, character, and all of that nonsense, which doesn't exist in nature. Maybe it really is about something man-made. No, women only care about the nature of males. And uh, there's pretty much nothing uh, that you can do to change it. Thanks for watching.